Okay, this podcast will go over how to install DNS on our CentOS uh, virtual machines. Uh, the first thing you should do is verify that the DNS package is, is installed, and you can do that using yum. Uh, if you know the name of the package, you can type yum list and whatever the package is. Name D is the Linux DNS server uh, uh, program name, so I'm going to try to list that first. Oh, hey, it didn't find that. So another thing you can do is if you don't really know the name of the package, you can you do yum search. So I'm going to do a yum search name D and see what I get. And that tells me the packages that match that. So in this case, it says the package I'm looking for is bind-chirut. So now I'm going to do yum list for bind-chirut. And that's going to tell me, oh, hey, the package is already installed. There is an available package update available. So we have a .5 point release and .7 is available. I'm not going to worry about updating that right now. So uh, we're going to make, we already have the package we need installed, and now we need to make our uh, server start that package and then use our custom configuration. So to get our custom configuration, we're going to download these DNS files.zip from D2L. I've already downloaded them. Click on the download link and save them. I've downloaded them. They've downloaded to my downloads directory, I think. Downloads. LS. So yeah, so I have, did I not? Oh no, I deleted them. That's right. I was going to download them, but then I deleted them. So I'm going to save the file. And now it's my downloads. I'm going to unzip it. Uh, I'm going to prefer to do things at the command line because uh, th that'll make this podcast useful for, for people who aren't running GUIs, which most servers don't run GUIs. So we unzip that, and if we see the end of that directory, we see we have three files, uh, a named.com file, a james.lab.zone file, and a um, reverse lookup zone file. So the named.com file is the main configuration file that we're going to have. And essentially, this just defines which zones we listen to. So this is, hey, you're going to listen for the James.lab zone, and you're listening to the reverse lookup zone for 10 dot, for 1.1.10. Uh, I might talk about that later. I don't know. It's just kind of the kind of thing right now. We're just going to do it and worry about what it means later. Uh, forwarders, this tells the DNS server, hey, if the request you get doesn't match one of these zones, then ask this server. That's my DNS server in the lab, so that's a good, good, uh, good... Uh, server to ask allow query you can put access controls in here so that you only accept uh, queries from certain certain IP addresses and allow recursion you can also control who you who you will recursively look up queries for and best practice is that you don't look up recursively for people who aren't on your network so that's probably something you'd want to change if this was a public DNS server but we're not really going to worry about that for now so what we're going to do is we're going to first off make sure that we can make this server work and we're going to essentially just copy our config files in place and try to start it without changing anything. So that way we know we have the server software installed properly. So what we're going to do is we're going to copy named.conf to the Etsy directory because it uh, that is where it's supposed to live. It's going to ask if I want to overwrite the existing file and I'll say yes. And then let's look at that named.conf file again. If we look at this namedy.com file, it tells where our zone file should live. So this says our zone file should be var named data. So we're going to copy those zone files. Uh, we're going to copy those zone files to var named data. We're going to copy the reverse lookup zone file to var named data. And now we have our zone files in the right place. All right, so now we're basically going to try to start the service and hope for the best. Before we start the service, we're going to start uh, tail-f of the uh, system main system log file because if something messes up, it's going to log to the system log file, and we want to see what it says. So I type tail-f var log messages, var log messages, uh, and then I hit a few enters so I can see the new entries when they come in. So I'm going to start uh, the service service name D start and see what happens so it looks like it started okay if we go look over here we get some command we get some uh, log entries uh, about some stuff that happened uh, if it would have said failed then we would have examined these log entries to see what the error was and we're gonna create a failure in a little while just to see what it looks like so my 
DNS server started with uh, the James.lab zone. So I want to ask my DNS server a question about the James.lab zone. So first off, I'm going to look and see what's in the James.lab.zone file. So if I look at these entries, uh, I have some uh, name server entries that define what my name servers are. I have some MX entries that define what my uh, mail exchangers are. I have some A records, which stands for an address record for some different hosts. Um, and then I have a couple C names down here for some different hosts. So if we look, if someone does a request for www.james.lab right now, it will match the C name that says, oh, hey, that's on server one. A C name is an alias. So if you have a bunch of different services on one server, you can put a bunch of C names in there instead of a bunch of A records if the protocol works with C records. Some protocols require A records, like mail. Even though these mail records say C names, mail kind of likes to have A records. So uh, you have to make sure your uh, record types match up what you put in your file. So in this case, if somebody asks for www.james.lab, they're going to get back server one. So how do you ask a name server a question? We're going to use NSLOOKUP. It's deprecated, which means that eventually it might disappear. You're supposed to use dig, but I can never remember the syntax for that. We're going to have another podcast later on that goes over uh, more about how to ask the name server some questions, but we're just doing this quickly to make sure it's working. If you just do uh, NSLOOKUP and enter, it puts you in this interactive mode where you can ask questions. So if I want to know what www.james.lab is, I can ask that question, and it's going to be like, oh, hey, I can't find that server. I can't find james.lab. And if we look, it tells you what server it asked. So in this case, it asked my default name server my system was configured to use. I do not want it to do that. I want it to ask me so I can define which server I want it to use by specifying uh, a name or a uh, IP address of the server. I could type server localhost. I could also type server 127.0.0.1. And I could also type whatever my IP address is, that should work too. I could also type server 172.16.99.219. So any of those things will work. And now that I'm asking my server, I can do www.james.lab and it will return a answer. So that proves that our server is working and it is looking at our config files. So that's fantastic. That means that we are most of the way done, and I always type quit, you should type exit. I always type quit, and I type control Z uh, before it finishes, but you should type exit if you wanna get out of there. Uh, and I say control C, I don't know if I say control Z, but I meant control C. So now we need to edit our files to make it point to our own domain name. So I'm gonna edit named.conf. Uh, I'm gonna change this to be my domain name which I said you guys should use your first initial and your last name uh, if you're watching this for CNT220. If you're watching it for some other class or some other reason, you need to match whatever your uh, instructions tell you to use or whatever domain name you're setting up. And I'm going to change my file name to rll.lab. So I'm going to start, I'm going to restart name D now. Uh, mainly to show you what it looks like when it fails because I don't have a file called that yet file called rll.lab.zone. So if I try to restart named service named restart, if I put the command in the right order, named it fails. Oh no, it fails. Why did it fail? Well, read the words. These error messages tell you what the problem is. So if you call me over to help you, I'm going to come over and read the words and say, oh hey, it says file not found. That means it can't find the file. So in this case, it's looking for my file, which doesn't exist. So I'm going to go create that var named data is where that lives, and I have a james.lab.zone. I'm going to copy james.lab.zone and make that rlwell.lab.zone, and then I'm going to edit that file. And what I want to do is I want to take all these james.labs and make them rlwell.lab, and I could certainly go edit all of them individually, but that's not my style, so I'm going to use the VI substitution uh, pattern substitution functionality to change it for me. So what this says is from line one comma dollar sign, dollar sign, dollar sign means the end of the file. I want to substitute anywhere you find James, put in RL well, and the G means globally. So sometimes if you don't put the G, that just does, I think the G uh, does more than one entry on a line. If you don't put the G, it only does the first entry it finds in the line, I think. But anyway, I always put the G. I guess I should probably know why. 
So I ran that command and that uh, changed all the james.labs to rlwell.labs. So now I'm gonna go start my DNS service and I have the file it's looking for now and I have correct entries in there and it started okay. So now I'm going to interrogate uh, my name server again to make sure it's returning stuff for my domain name. So there we go, it's now returning stuff for my domain name. Um, this is not gonna work right now because I'm not in the lab, I'm not connected, but if you are also in the lab and connected, you can also look up my other domain name uh, and it should forward the request to my domain name server and you should get a response for that. This isn't gonna work uh, because I'm not in the lab and not connected, so I can't reach my, my lab domain name server, but you should try this in the lab to make sure you can resolve my domain names. Uh, the last thing we're going to look at in this uh, podcast is the reverse lookup zone. So we had that funny, where am I at? Almost type quit again. We have this 1.1.10 in adder ARPA file. If we look at that file, it has some weird stuff in there. Uh, Basically, this is a special file used to do reverse lookups. A reverse lookup is if you have an IP address and you want to know what name goes with it. So I'm going to go ahead and edit that file to change my stuff to match my name. So I'm going to do that same VI substitution, comma, do dollar, uh, james.lab, lol.lab, global. All right, so that made this, this file mine. So basically what, what this means is anything that is, has the IP address 10.1.1 will go in this file. And this is just some weird backwards format it does. It starts at the end of the IP address and works its way towards the beginning. That's just the way they define the protocol. I guess it makes sense. I never really considered if it makes sense or not. But basically, if I do an NS lookup for 10.1.1, I'll get back DNS1.lwl.lab. If I do 10.1.2, I'll get uh, DNS2.rlwl.lab. So let's go test that. First thing we need to do is you need to, to remember to restart your, your services anytime you change uh, one of those config files because they get read at startup time and uh, not any other time. You might be able to do some other thing, like you could do reload, which, I don't know, reloads the, the services. There's different things. I, I kind of always just restart it just because that's my uh, habit. Probably not a good one to be in. So now if I do NS lookup, put the server name of local host, and then put in um, one of my IP addresses. It should tell me the name of that. So there we go. I put in the IP address and it told me the, the name that matched that IP address. So so that is uh, that's really uh, what we're trying to accomplish in this part of the lab. A couple of key points, I have to quit again. A couple of key points. If you'll notice, I'm running root shells. Uh, Restarting the services and, and uh, some of these other things require root access and I kind of get tired of forgetting to type sudo. So I almost always run with the root shells even though it's like the worst idea ever. Uh, so you need to make sure that you do things as root, whether that means you run sudo in front of it or you actually become root by using sudo-s uh, to become root. Uh, if you get an error that says permission denied, that probably means you need to use sudo or do it as root. You know, if you do want to do sudo to, for the command, you can do sudo service uh, name D restart as the uh, student user, and that will restart the service without having to come root. Another thing uh, you might want to mention, I'm, I'm going to mention, is every time I typed NS lookup, I had to specify which server to use. What if I get tired of doing that and I want to, I want to permanently use myself as the DNS server? Well, the file that your system uses for DNS. Uh, to list the DNS server is resolve.conf. So if I go change this to change to my my IP address. Now in theory, if I just do NS lookup in my domain name, that's not my domain name. It should work. So uh, if you want to tell your machine to all to use yourself for DNS, then you can edit the uh, Etsy name d.comp file. Sorry, Etsy resolve.comp file to tell your uh, 
machine to use itself for DNS. So uh, that is really all I think I had to, wanted to go over in this podcast. So the end.